Combustion is a widely studied topic in chemistry and in science in general. Uh, and fitting right in with the gas laws, we know that when you burn a hydrocarbon, you produce carbon dioxide. We also know that carbon dioxide is used to extinguish flames. A very interesting experiment or demonstration to try with students and to get some student involvement is to simply show the students three candles as I have up here. What we're going to do is we're going to light the candles and you would tell your students that you were going to do that and ask them to predict after the candles have been burning for a while and then covered with this glass jar what the order of extinguishing of the flames would be. Giving them enough time to sit down and think about it for a few minutes, of course, we know there are only a few possibilities. The short candle will go out first, the tall candle will go out first, or possibly they will all go out together. Of course, you always have the one student who says, well, you're trying to trick us, they're not going to go out. Well, that remains to be seen. So, once you have had them either write down or jot down their uh, predictions, or maybe even vocalize and say them to the class, you light your candles. Now, something I learned many years ago, if you're going to do this, pre-burn your candle for a few seconds before you try it because they light much easier once they've been burned one time. Okay, no magic. We're going to take the jar and we're going to put the jar over. And it's simply an observation. Can we dim the lights a little bit and maybe we can just halfway? There we go. Now, what's going on here? Well, we're producing combustion products, carbon dioxide. Some students will say, well, the short candle is going to go out first because carbon dioxide is heavier than air and therefore it will settle to the bottom and extinguish the short candle. Other students will say the oxygen is going to be used up so they're all going to go out at the same time. And we can see now that it's really the top candle, the tallest candle that goes out first. And this brings us to a very nice discussion of not only the carbon dioxide, but other factors in terms of gases and combustion. And of course, that's very simply explained that what's happening here is yes, the carbon dioxide is extinguishing the candles. However, the often overlooked observation is the fact that that carbon dioxide is hot and it rises to the top of the container. So that what happens is the carbon dioxide builds from the top down because it has less density and it extinguishes the tallest candle first. A neat alternative to this and a corollary to this would be to reverse the experiment and Again, this is something you probably will not have available, but if you have access to some dry ice, take the jar, turn the jar up this way, put your candles into the jar, and same, same order, and put your flames on the candles and put a piece of dry ice in the bottom and ask the same question, what will happen? And very simply, as the dry ice begins to uh, sublime, the carbon dioxide now being cold and being more dense is going to reverse the order and the shorter candle will go out and then the middle and the top one. So this is a neat, simple demonstration. Doesn't take very long to do demonstrates a number of very simple basic concepts in chemistry and in science in general and is applicable to life experiences. One of the reasons why during a house fire you're always told head to the floor, crawl out if there's a fire 
in a building because that hot carbon dioxide and vapors rise to the ceiling.